A big part of emergency management is being prepared for anything. Part of that plan for what ifs involves floods because we're impacted so frequently by them. And Johnson County responders know just how quickly a flood situation can escalate. And it just so happens that on the 10 year anniversary of the 08 floods, we're being tested again by Mother Nature. And when Mother Nature decided to dump several inches of rain onto already saturated soil, area responders jumped into action. Look at what the community members are going to need from us from an, from an assistance standpoint. The first step to getting a plan together is looking at the science. After the 2008 floods, the Iowa Flood Center, or IFC, was created to allow for a more local approach to hydraulic data. We were very frustrated that we couldn't help. So when the legislators um, recognized that we have some expertise that is relevant to the safety of the people in the state, they put us to work. And uh, <laughs> we went to work. Operating as part of the University of Iowa's College of Engineering, the IFC's main goal is to help Iowans understand flood risks and make better decisions in the face of an emergency. To do that, the organization operates and monitors 250 bridge sensors to measure stream height and creates flood prediction maps to share with the public. The need for that kind of localized technology is highlighted by the shocking number of major flood events our state has seen in the past 30 years. We had nearly uh, 1,000 uh, presidential disaster declarations due to flooding. That is a staggering number. The numbers the flood center was predicting is what prompted the opening of the Emergency Operations Center. This was done to gather more than 30 local, state, and federal agencies to get on the same page to get them on point, to get everybody focused on the problem at hand, to share information so we have a common operating picture. And while both the federal and state agencies play a role, the action items are going to be on a more local level. So whether it's Iowa City, Coralville, Johnson County, North Liberty, the coordination that has to go in um, has to start at home first. That includes communicating road or park closures to the public, details on sandbagging sites, and, in more serious situations, evacuation information. Fortunately, this time around, residents were spared having to leave their homes behind, thanks to a much-needed break in the rain. The river stayed lower than what was expected. And while things could have been worse, it did provide a good opportunity to test flood prevention efforts our communities have put in place. We invested this money on mitigation, what projects worked well, how well the design plans go, and where's our weaknesses. One of the biggest steps taken is the Gateway Project, a more than $40 million effort to reduce flooding at Iowa City's busiest entrance. The plan raised Dubuque Street 10 feet, which was known as a problem area for flooding along the river. Crews also replaced and raised Park Road Bridge, which was flooded during the big 2008 event. If water levels were this high three years ago, Dubuque Street would have been inundated with water. If that would have happened in 2014, the Emergency Operations Center would have been active for days. If the Gateway Project would not have been there, we'd have had to close Dubuque Street. We'd have already evacuated Mayflower Hall. And this was the first time the nearly completed project was put to the test. To have it function the way you wanted it to function with this event, definitely gratifying. Another effort was to move Iowa City's wastewater treatment plant and turn the space into a wetland that can act as a runoff for Ralston Creek. We were also able to consolidate our wastewater plant and we have a wonderful park at Riverfront Crossings Park now that is functioning very well from a mitigation standpoint also. It's created some area for a backwater on the Ralston Creek. And it's exactly these type of efforts that can help reduce the impact of future flooding. So it would have been much, much different had the mitigation projects not been completed in Iowa City, in Coralville, and buyouts not have happened in the county. 